Foot Devils. Do it all back to answer more goddamn questions. Questions we got first. We got two order questions. And we got a fucking devil in need. Well, kind of a need, I guess. So this first comment, uh, it's not really a question. Eh, I guess it's kind of a question. There's a little little bit of a little of a paragraph. But uh, I thought it'd be a good one to read off. Read off. Kind of a totally different uh, subject. The guy was asking my opinion. But it was on yesterday's video. Today's video? Yesterday's video, I believe, posted. It was the uh, Controversy Gets Clicks or whatever fucking video. I remember I printed it off so that way I'd have it because... I just scroll the next video live, which was, you know how the fuck I am, two, three weeks behind. So this is from yesterday's video, seven, eight days old by the time you guys see this. And it's from Just Pure Bomb. Hey, j Dog, first time commenting. Fuck yeah. What well, I like to hear? Grab out comment more often, goddammit. What the fuck are you being shy for? Helps the old dog out. So I'm told, even though I don't get, in case you haven't, guys, haven't noticed, too, I haven't even been, the last several videos, I haven't even been monetizing them. I'm like, fuck this shit. I ain't even getting paid for this goddamn crap. My bank account keeps getting fucking denied. So why junk up my video with these stupid-ass fucking ads? I'm not even getting paid. Literally, I haven't received one goddamn penny for this stupid-ass fucking thing. So, um, uh, helps you guys out, I guess. You don't have to sit through that bullshit. So, uh, anyway, first time commenting. I just got tickets for me and my friend for Maryland Death Fest, and my brother was really pissed off. Yeah, what the fuck, what say does he get? Pissed off at me for getting those tickets and told me to sell them. Obviously, I told him to fuck off because it's my life. <laughs> He definitely thinks it's because I'm a uh, I'm a small dude, which I am. I'm five foot six, hundred twenty pounds. What fuck's that have to do with going to a show though, brah, brah? And I'm only six, and I'm only sixteen, but I'll be eighteen by Maryland Death Fest. Old dog was going to shows at thirteen. No problems, bro town. I'm starting to go to concerts now since I'm driving. I'm seeing Morbid Angel, and after that, it's Possessed. Is the Possessed with uh, Nunslaughter tour? Because actually, uh. I think the very last date is the Cleveland show, Not Slaughter with Possessed. I will definitely be there regardless. I think it's at the place called the Grog Shop, which is mm, not my favorite venue to attend. Not because actually the venue is actually pretty good. It's just that's a fucking haul. The, the, the drive is a completely different, uh, inconvenient location. It's not just straight off the highway. It's all this goddamn, gotta get, I got to get the goddamn map quest or whatever they call it these days, GPS, whatever the fuck it is, every single time because it's impossible for me to remember all those goddamn turns. Uh, but uh, hoping to meet goddamn Becerra too. Get my uh, seven churches uh, picture to sign. That's what I'm fucking hoping for. We'll f we'll, we'll see, goddammit. I'm starting to get a... Okay. I'm not an idiot and won't go into the pit. I mean, if you did, I don't think you'd be a fucking idiot, dude. Fuck some, some, some of the chicks going in the pit. In the pit until I really feel like I'm ready. So, so 18, perfect time to start, bro. Time. I was going in the pit at 13. But now that uh, he told my parents that he's concerned... My parents are on edge about me go even going to Maryland Death Fest. Hey, you're 18, brah, brah. That's, as far as I'm concerned, grown-ass man, allowed to do what the fuck you want, right? Thing is that he's been to a bunch of concerts, so have I, bro town, in his life, so he knows what's up. This guy knows what's up, too. I, I'm, I'd probably fucking concert that, but your brother under the fucking table. I, I, so far, I see zero problems. It would be awesome if you could respond to this so I could figure out what to do. Stay evil. Go to the fucking show, brah, brah. What the fuck? Do you, yeah, what do you need his permission for? See there to hold your hand? You'll be 18. And uh, and if he sees this or you want to show him this or your parents, there's nothing to worry about. I've been going to shows since I was 13. I think I was around the same height because you said you're shorter. I mean, you're not that short. 5'6". Five, I'm 5'9". Five, so I'm, I'm no Shaquille O'Neal, my goddamn self. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if age 13, I'm assuming I wasn't 5'9 yet. Probably not. But I definitely graduated high school at 5'9". Actually, I'm, well, I'm a little bit shorter. That Technically, my exact medical height was 5'9 and 3 quarters. But in the last few years, I'm 5'9 and a quarter. <laughs> so I shrunk half fucking inch. Um, but when I graduated high school, I was 125 pounds. So theoretically, at 13 and shit, I don't know. I wasn't, you know, I was always, you know, I was just always very, very thin. Um, so if I was shorter, I was, I don't know, buck 15, buck 10. And I was, you know, going to the pits and shit. Uh, I didn't, my very first show was death. Can't remember if I went in the, I don't think I went in the pit in that, but I definitely did by age 14, 100% positive I did because I was in the pit of the fucking mortician with the fucking 15 people that were there. Uh, mortician, Immolation, the Failures for Gods tour, that was uh, 99 as well. Both those shows were 99. I definitely was in the pit of both those. Morbid Angel, uh, that was, I think that was 99 for the uh, Formula's Fatal Flesh tour. Definitely was in the pit of that. Uh, Cannibal Corpse, I definitely was the first time. That's 2001, so I was, six, I was your age then. 16 at that. Uh, six Feet Under in 1999. Uh, Halloween 1999, Six Feet Under, the Maximum Violence Tour. I was 1,000% in the pit at that. That was a shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder too. 
Um, so the point being is I was younger than you going. I mean, it's not this fucking, no one's pulling out knives or anything like that. You, <laughs> what I'm seeing, what your uh, parents are worried or your, your brother, if he, knows, if, he, if he knows what's up, apparently he doesn't know what's up. To me, metal shows are the most tame ass fucking shows with a bunch of goddamn screech powers and fucking uh, Steve Urkel's walking around. Wait, wait, I don't want to do least dangerous place you'll ever go. I've never seen a fight in my life. And I've been to, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I've been to a thousand shows at this point in my entire fucking life. You add them all up, shows I've attended to, shows I've been to that, ones I wanted to go to, ones I didn't want to go to, everything. Even the small, minor, just uh, backyard show. It's probably, I don't know, close to a thousand, something like that. I've been going since 98, so what is that, 25 fucking years? Um, it's got to be someone in that area. Um, I mean, yeah, I've never seen a fight, never seen anybody get shanked. But what, you, what it sounds like is you remind me of my, uh, they remind me of my grandma. Like when she would be saying stuff like when we first get wind that we were going to shows and something, my brother's, oh my God, you got to be careful. There's people, they walk around with needles and they'll drug you for no reason. Never once in my entire ass fucking life seen that shit. So what it is, is just your parents and shit, they're hearing this extreme music and they're blowing it out of proportion, thinking it's something that it fucking isn't. A bunch of nerds collecting fucking music. And uh, if they're worried that you're going to be getting drunk and fucked up and partying and fucking banging hoes and all sorts of shit. For starters, I've never been confronted by a fucking female at a show in my entire goddamn life. So good luck getting pussy at fucking metal shows. Sausage Fest Central. So you ain't getting laid, so get that out of your fucking head right now. That definitely ain't fucking happening. Hair and motherfucking tea. Dog will pay you if you do, because that ain't happening. So that's not happening. Uh Drinking and shit. I didn't drink at the fucking shows. And they ID you, so you're not going to be able to drink anyways unless someone's buying for you. I didn't care. I didn't start drinking until I was uh, 22 years old. I was never a party guy. Uh, didn't smoke pot. Tried it the first time when I was 30 years old. I'm like, this shit fucking smells like ass and it makes me tired. Don't even fucking like this shit. And I never done any recreational drugs. So what I'm getting at is you don't have to be drinking and partying and doing drugs if you're going to shows. So scratch that off. They don't need to worry about that. Um, Maryland, for sure, they're going to be patting people down for weapons and shit. Again, I've never seen a weapon pulled on anybody ever in my entire life at a goddamn show. Fist fights don't happen. It's literally fucking screech powers, fucking Steve Urkel, goddamn Zach Morris ass fucking nerds walking around the goddamn show with long hair and black clothes. <laughs> Hell, I, these days you, you see, you, well, actually next guy in line, <laughs> pink fucking clothes and shit going on. So <laughs> they're allowed in. Just, just, just wear a band shirt, bro. And you'll 100% be the fucking, uh, not the oddball out, at least. Because, yeah, pink, pink clothes walking in now. No surprise there, though, goddammit. With these fucking flat bin, brim, sideways hat, mother canoe ass motherfuckers that have been coming for the last 23 goddamn years. No surprise there. So, uh, yeah, tell your brother, tell your parents, chill the fuck out. Nothing goddamn worry about it. I'm going, goddamn it. And, by the way, the dog will probably be there, too. As long as Hemorrhage is playing, I got a... Uh, 80%, I mean, he didn't, get, he didn't give me a percentage, but uh, I contacted Lizma. It's sounding like they're going to be there. They don't know 100% for sure if they'll be able to get the country. Looking like they will, though. He said he's pretty confident. That was just the hiccup the last time. If he confirms to me, which I'm going to keep following up, so I'm all the way probably until about two months out. So you figure all the way till fucking like April. Yeah, I would say March, April of next year, a year from now. I'll follow all the way up to the end. When he gives me a definite, hey, man, we got our tickets. We're definitely going. If he says that, and I got at least two months' notice, uh, then I'll definitely go at least one of the days. Uh, I don't know if I'll go all three days. Maybe, depending on the lineup. Uh, but I would definitely uh, go for uh, just the day Hemmer's playing. So look out for the old dog. Apparently, I don't think it's fucking that goddamn dangerous. Yeah, make him understand the show that's not 13. Fucking, you're, trust me, you'll be fucking motherfucking fine. And if I'm wrong, your goddamn family can hold me the fuck to it. Next question in line, and it was a goddamn order question. Am Andy Amberjay. Hey, J Dog, been watching your channel for about a month and a half now, bra bra. You got fucking 14 months of catching up, bra bra. Make sure to watch that back catalog. There's some bangers in there. I got into punk 2019, so basically yesterday, and just recently got into death metal back in, back in September 22. <laughs> so, so last night, <laughs> listening to Death Carcass and Cannibal. Starting off with the sick shit, bra bra. Anyways, question. Do you think the new Six Feet Under will be better than their previous release in 2020? Or do you think it's time for Chris Barnes to hang up the dreads and gauges? Laugh out loud. Yeah, you got a lot of watching, dude, Brown Rob, because, yeah, I, I'm not familiar with anything by Six Feet Under since 1999. <laughs> that was the last one I'm familiar with. Maximum Violence, which is the last one I liked. 
I've heard other shit here and there, a song here and there, like America the Brutal. I was like, yeah, it's a kind of a yo 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 death metal song, kind of bouncy, kind of catchy. It's kind of cool, whatever. Heard the Graveyard Classics with fucking uh, Scooby on vocals. That was kind of silly. Um, but most of the shit I never even heard. As far as uh, Barnes hanging up, I mean, who am I to tell him? He's fucking out, out success in my ass, and I'm sure he's. I don't know. I think Barnes, what do you guys think? You think Chris Barnes is a millionaire? Um, my definition of a millionaire, too, is you have a million dollars or more in your goddamn bank account. Um, I think it's possible that he is, unless he's a complete dumb fuck with his money. So um, he's doing better than I am. So who the fuck am I telling? But I mean, am I going to be picking up the new 1600 for what you're asking? Highly unlikely. Thesis Thomas. Oh, he sent this to me an email, too. This is about the pink, pink, pink clothes coming in the scene. I knew it was going to happen. Didn't I call you guys out? Didn't I tell you? Let's see what the fuck he's got to say. Hey, hey, Big J. Dude, I don't know if you will mention this on the show. Here the fuck we are. But man, me and some buddies seen some gay ass shit here at the Hell's Heroes Fest. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that fest. Where was that? Was that the one in Texas? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I know I vaguely know. Was that the uh, kind of like the old school fest with all the um, like heavy metal bands playing, the 80s bands? I know very little bit about it. Heard it briefly, so I'm not uh, aware of all the details. One guy wearing those tight chick pants. <laughs> You guys sell for the ladies. Yep, they exist. Pink tight death leprosy pants with a pink vest with a death leprosy back patch and a pink cowboy <laughs> Well, I'll give him some credit. At least he was wearing a goddamn metal uh, clothes. Uh, at least it was death leprosy. So fucking could be just fucking all pink around, right? A pink cowboy hat, too. What the fuck? Do you even think they made a goddamn... I didn't even think they made cowboy hats in fucking pink. I can honestly say I've never seen that. And another dude with tight, tight leopard pants with a, with a, of all band, Nasty Savage shirt on. Of all band, I think one of you meant one of those all over Nasty Savage. Again, at least the guy has a metal shirt on. Again, leopard pants, first damn possible mind is Michael Denner. Uh, look at the back of Gut, Merciful Fate, Nuns Have No Fun. One of the greatest, I don't even say one of the greatest. That is the greatest fucking 12 inch uh, maxi LPs of all motherfucking time. Uh, but yeah, Michael Denner looks like a fucking, it was, a, it was either Michael Denner or Hank Sherman. I'm pretty sure it was Denner, but he's wearing those leopard pants. When I first saw it, I'm like, what is this buffoon doing? I was like, look at King Diamond, this badass this motherfucker, this fucking doink is just wearing the, he, what are you doing, dude? So, Michael thought it was acceptable, so I guess. When the fuck in Satan's name is going, is going on in this scene, man? Question marks. When I saw that, I told my buddy J Dog will have a field day on this this one. That's some gay ass poser shit there, man. <laughs> Take care, <laughs> that thesis. Um, yeah, but again, none of this shit fucking surprises me. Uh, again, I'll give them slight credit. I mean, at least they're actually wearing respectable metal bands. Is that the uh, wardrobe the dog will ever be caught dead in? Fuck no. Uh, but what you described sounds like uh. Sound better than the Emperor Cardectimony guy. That guy didn't have any fucking metal on. He just had sports jerseys and a fucking flat brim sideways on. And his, bu his buddy in the fucking, uh, behind the kit had a goddamn grill in his fucking mouth. Oh, literally a grill. I'm like, oh, dude, these guys are just purposely fucking with the scene. Goddamn spitting all the fucking screen. Uh, but so they beat that. I don't know. It just sounds like two guys, they're wearing classic, uh, metal shirts that they, they, they like to suck dick on the side. So that's what it sounds like to me. So, um. None of it surprises me. And they fit right in with goddamn Michael Denner. Which, uh, yeah, I thought he was a fucking bozo too back then. Anyways, next goddamn question on the video. Something Cross has a rap album, question marks. It was confirmed to me too. People were telling me, oh, well, I said it's not a rap album. They said it's one song. I think that's what I was told. First question mark to the bottom. Question marks. j Dog, we need you to take a shot at Planet Fitness. Thoughts? Uh, I've, full disclosure, I've never stepped inside of Planet Fitness, but I know their shtick. Um, it's just a bunch of fucking pussies that aren't serious about fucking training going there. Um, now don't get me wrong, you could get the job done anywhere. All the weights are and shit is that, it's just tools. So you can use them to get shredded and fucking build muscle. It's just, um, it's just from what I hear, it's just a bunch of, a bunch of pussies uh, up there. If you make any sounds whatsoever, they kick you out. Um... From what I've heard, they serve fucking, what is it? They say they there's pizza or whatever at the, at the front desk. <laughs> what the fuck? You just finished doing your cardio, have a slice of pizza. That's kind of defeats the fucking goddamn purpose, but whatever. <laughs> and uh, it just looks like a bunch of, yeah, it's literally people that are in and out of the fucking uh, gym and then I'm off. Yeah, going there, you know? So I don't know anyone that's 
overly jacked that goes there. Let's just put it through that way. And I don't mean like step footed. Maybe they're on vacation, they're out of town, and that was the only gym in their area, so they had to make do. Okay, then I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about regularly goes there. That's the gym they choose. I don't know anybody that's jacked out of their fucking skull, at least by my definition. Some guys think 180 pounds with abs is jacked out of their fucking skull. If that's your definition, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of those guys there. But um, jacked out of your skull to me is 240, 240 plus single digit body fats at five foot nine or taller. That's that jacked out of your skull in, in the J Dawn's fucking book. So I guarantee you, there's not one motherfucker that's training right over pound fitness there. Uh, Ricky Jones, J Dog, we know how you feel about hats and metal. However, what about guys in bands wearing shorts? <laughs> It's funny, who said that to me too? Like, oh, Jado has got shorts on, surprise. I think it was in person. I'm like, well, I wear, what, what, I'm like, I'm supposed to be hot? I was like, yeah, I wouldn't wear them on stage. Like, just imagine how fucking silly that is. Like, when you see, like, imagine a band like Midnight it, up there in shorts. It just look fucking stupid. Imagine King Diamond in shorts. You just, you just, I, I wouldn't do that. No, I would, I would put a pair of drawers on, brah, brah. Um, so, no, I wouldn't wear them on. The only acceptable, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, unless you got a shtick, is, um, Gezal from Sabat looks cool as fuck. He's in his undies and fucking bullet belts and shit, but that was that's totally different. I mean, that, he just that was their whole image, right? Uh so yeah, shorts, totally fucking fine. I wear them my goddamn self. Uh, but if I was in a band, I would again, I don't even think there's anything wrong with hats. When I had long hair, I fucking uh wore a hat fuck. As the as the dog gets balder and balder and balder, he might even bust out the goddamn hat. Might have to pull the fucking uh Hulkamania, goddamn it. I, you know, Hulk Hogan's always in a goddamn bandana. Maybe I won't get to where is that fucking stupid. I'm like, dude, just shave it completely. That looks like dog shit in half. But uh, maybe just out and about when you don't want to fuck with the goddamn uh, the dude that's left. Just throw a goddamn nun slaughter hat on something to call a goddamn day. Uh, there's a very good chance I will do that. I never said there's anything wrong with hats. Just fucking put some curve in that goddamn brim and don't be wearing it on stage. That's all I've ever fucking said. So I think people will take the shit out, I say, a little bit out of context. Just like I never said, you have to be wearing a metal shirt 24-7. I have some shirts that aren't metal. Yes, majority of the time I do wear uh, metal shirts, like literally probably 98% of the time. Um, but I have a few other shirts. I'm just saying, if I was to go, if I was in a band and getting on stage, I wouldn't wear non-metal shirt. That's all I'm saying. Just look, look, fit the fucking part. Like, put on a goddamn show. For example, like, I guarantee you the first guy, who was it? Uh, just Pure Bomb? His his parents and shit, what they have in mind, they, <laughs> just show them some of these videos of some of these idiots, man. Just, uh, I mean, show them the effort card deck money shit. This, this is what you get. Oh, wasn't expecting that at all. Expect the Rocky Mountains to be a little rockier than this. Yeah, exactly. I was expecting this to be a little more metal looking than this. I was expecting some black clothes. Upside down crosses, burning pentagrams, something of that nature. That's what they're thinking. They're not thinking some fucking canoe ass looking motherfucker and some baggy ass clothes with a sideways flat brim hat. You start showing them out, they're like, "Oh, that's that's cousin Johnny. He, yeah, he he redresses like that. Oh yeah, you can go uh, pure bond. Show them that. You know what I mean? So that's that's all I'm saying. Like it, 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 what the average person would think, death metal show. Oh, it's probably going to look death metal. You would think. Not with all these guys, though, and shorts don't look death metal, goddammit. Put on air drawers. Off the stage, we're totally fine, though. Yeah, I don't like sweat my nuts off. Who the fuck likes to do that? Rabin, Rabin, Rendon, J-Dog, which three bands and albums, in your mind, are the zenith of extreme metal? Zenith of extreme metal. I don't know. I'm thinking of Pale Nazarene, Ugra Karma. Belt for the Last Supper, and the Angel Corpse Exterminate. Offensive namesakes, album covers, lyrics, etc. Extreme instrumentation, dynamics, and overall brutality. I don't think it gets more extreme than those bands and their outputs. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Pro Fanatica? You know, probably. I think Pro Fanatica is probably more extreme. And that's similar criteria than like Belphegor, like just to use that one over that. Uh, I think it's probably more extreme than Angel Corpse too. Although I like Angel Corpse more than I do like Pro Fanatica. But uh, because mm, yeah, the first Impale, especially the first Impale Nazarene. Yeah, the second one too, because you mentioned the second one. Uh, yeah, those are pretty extreme. Um, well, the first band's come on mind for at least for the stuff that you kind of mentioned. The criteria you gave is kind of Pro Fanatica. 
I'm sure there's somebody else in there too, though. Kmart Gath, question marks, Ron and Christ, that mighty contract, 1993, question marks. Are you asking if I like it? Yeah, I think it's pretty good album. I've heard you mention it before once in a video a while back. I don't think you shared too much about it. But what do you think of the album? I think it's one of the best debuts from any band ever, and that the riffs are just as good as DBK. Yeah, the early Rodney Christ stuff is good. I don't know it, know it, and I heard it much, much later. When I first saw Rodney Christ in 1999, they were really doing a lot of like keyboardy type stuff by then. And then I saw them again in the early 2000s, same thing. When I finally heard something that was very, very keyboardy, I didn't hear like Thy Mighty Contract and still stuff and uh, Non Servium. And uh, there's the promo demo. Was it like 91, 92? Until uh, so that stuff kind of get started getting reissued a few years ago. Um, well, a little bit more than a few years ago. So maybe probably heard that shit in my very early 30s, late 20s for the first time. So. Yeah, I think it's good, but I just didn't, uh, it wasn't something I grew up on. So maybe that's why I don't reference it as much. Most of the stuff that I bring up when I bring up the immolations and shit like that, it's because those, I literally grew up on those fucking bands. So um, they're a little easier for me to reference because I know it knows. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't, re uh, that mighty contract, I couldn't air guitars, but every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, so yeah, it's a good, enjoyable uh, metal record. Just like uh, Barathron, uh, His Majesty of the Swamp. That's pretty much the only one I know. That's a good record. You know what I mean? But I don't know it, know it. Um, I heard that in my 20s, though. I think there was like a bootleg version that came in through Hells. Uh, it was just a CD. It could have been. Maybe it was official. Uh, but I know it came out several times since then on different other pressings. But So I did hear that one. Actually, So I heard the Varathron, uh, actually, before I heard the uh, the first Varathron. I heard before the first Rotting Christ. Obviously, I heard Rotting Christ before I heard the Varathron. Now, you know, hell fucking it's all live. I've never seen Varathron all live. But, um, his Majesty of Swamp, that was another Greek uh, album that I thought, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good record, you know what I mean? So, but I don't, yeah, again, I don't, do I know it like I know fucking Failures for God by, by Immolation? No, not even close to it. No, so. Anyways, that's it. This one, Comics, what's your journey? You know what we're going to do? What's Comics getting at the morning? Later, goddammit.